Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers, Florida. Welcome to an episode of the Heartbeat for Realtors podcast. Here with, uh, I'm just going to call him a friend because we've uh, talked once already, Troy Thornhill with Healthy Home Inspections. Troy, how you doing, buddy? I'm uh, good, Tim. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Right. Thanks for coming back on. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, last time we talked about, uh, you know, with the inspections for the new construction, right? And so a lot of our buyers out there, they're buying resale, right? Houses that have been lived in before. And it sounds like a pretty cool topic and it's something you hear a lot of. And that is, what kind of inspections do I need? And so you're going to kind of break these down for you and or for you, for us, right? And the listener. And so we'll find out. What the home inspect, what a home inspection they'll need, and you know, kind of what each one of those entails. Sound good? Yeah, all sounds good. Cool, man. So, you, uh, first, I mean, do you want to kind of set it up to like, there's a lot of different home, you know, three types of home inspections, right? Home inspection, wind mitigation, and the four point. Right. I would say those, that's your core, uh, your core three inspections that we do uh, most often. Okay. Um, as far as what inspections a person's going to need, um, I usually try to figure that out as soon as someone calls me. I say, what's it cost? What do I need? Uh, first thing I ask is what year is the house built? Because that has a lot to do with what you're eventually going to need to obtain homeowner's insurance. So a couple of uh, extra inspections that people get are wind mitigation and four point, which are both insurance inspections. Okay. Uh, wind mitigation is going to save you money on your homeowner's insurance 90% of the time. So typically that wind mitigation is going to be required on homes that are built prior to 2003, usually. Uh, depends on the insurance company. Some of them do want them on newer homes, but that's a good general rule of thumb is anything prior to 03. Um, yep. So, and the best way. Consumer should talk to their insurance carrier if they need one or not. Yeah, that's, that's usually what I recommend. I say, here's the general rule of thumb, but you always want to check with your insurance person just to make sure that you're getting what they are going to need to get you homeowner's insurance. Um, for those that don't know what a wind mitigation is, the best way, I, the easiest way for me to explain it is it's a wind study on the house. Uh, it has to do with hurricanes, and there's a, a standard form with a list of things that we go through and check to give information to the insurance company. So they'll go through that form and give, give them discounts on their homeowner's insurance based on what's at the house and how it's constructed. Gotcha. Um, the four point on the other hand is a little different. So can we go back to wind mitigation now? Yeah. Yeah. What you got? Um, just, so what are they, you know, here, I hear a lot of it, you know, the, the, the straps or the, the, the toenails are like, I mean, what, what does the ideal insurance company want on that roof to give you the most savings? Well, we could talk about it for a long time, Tim, but the, the biggest things that affect your insurance, the two biggest things usually are the hurricane straps. So it's what's called as the roof to wall attachment. So that's what holds the roof down and connects it to the exterior walls. So on new homes, they have um, single straps or wraps. So that's a metal connector that wraps up and over the top of the roof trusses and that's what holds the roof down. Um, on older homes, they have, they call them clips. They don't wrap over the truss. So if those clips aren't secured properly, then it makes a huge difference in your insurance premium. And that's where I'm sure you've experienced it. You know, so you've got somebody that's close on their budget on uh, getting approved for a mortgage. All of a sudden their insurance comes back $2,000 higher than you anticipated. And now you've got a problem with them getting approved for a mortgage all because of these hurricane straps or clips. Uh, so that's the biggest one. Uh, the other thing is probably the roof geometry, the shape of the roof, which isn't easily changed, obviously. But if you have a hip roof, they give you a nice discount. If you have the hurricane clips or straps, those are the two biggest things to look for. Hip roof and the hurricane straps. That's right. Yeah. Now, there's a whole list of other stuff. You know, if the house has hurricane shutters, uh, the age of the roof, um, the age of the house. So there's some other stuff that go into that. But those are the two biggest things that typically affect insurance premiums. Thanks. Yep. So, four points. Four yep. Points. So the four points totally different. Um, the four point can really determine whether the home is even insurable. So you've got a home buyer trying to buy a house from somebody who's currently owns it. And if they can't get insurance, then you can't close the deal. 
So for the four points are roof, electrical, plumbing, heating, and cooling. The general rule of thumb on a four point is 25 to 30 years. So if the house is 25 to 30 years old or older, then you're more than likely gonna need a four point. Again, you always wanna check with your insurance company because they may want it even on newer homes. Here lately in the past year or so, we've had a lot of insurance companies even requiring them on 10, 12 year old houses. So the biggest thing for me on getting a four point done up front when you have your home inspection is you do it within your due diligence period. So let's say there's items that have to be repaired for this home to, to be insurable. Now's your time to go back and negotiate those things with the seller. Otherwise, if you wait too late, you're outside of your inspection period and now you can't negotiate those items. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we see that a lot, man, where it's like they get out of the inspection period and they're like hoping and praying that the appraisal mentions it, you know, that that's right. that, that their saving grace. But um, yeah, those four points, though, I mean, they could really uh, help or hurt, right? Like it's, I mean, we, we've seen some deals, I don't know if they go down to flames, man, but they, they can cause some issues because they can't get insurance, they need a loan. And no lender is going to give you a loan without a house that's insurable. Right. And, you know, unfortunately, it's a fine line for us as inspectors because we have to do what's right and honest, of course. Right. But at the same time, we want to help our clients to be able to get into the home that they're trying to buy. But you can't do something unethical by putting on paper, hey, this roof's fine. But knowing that it's leaking and knowing that it's shot, it's time to replace this roof. You know, the form blatantly asks us how many years of estimated remaining life on that roof. And that's another good thing to know is generally with most insurance companies, I'm going to have to be able to put at least three to five years of estimated life on that roof or the home may not be insurable. How, how so, long is the average life of the roof right now? Uh, it, it depends, of course, on the type of roofing material. Um, architectural dimensional shingles up to about 25 years. Uh, some of the less expensive, like a three tab shingle, 18 up to maybe 20 if you're lucky, but a lot of the insurance companies are shying away from even those three tab roofs. Once they get up to that 17, 18 years, a lot of them are making that call and saying, Hey, you've got to replace your roof or um, we're dropping you. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, you guys more just talking with you, you guys get put in a unique situation and a realtor and me, the lender is like, we're up with the appraiser, you know, like, why'd you kill our deal? You mm -hmm. know, you got to deal with that a lot. No, we can do another podcast about you know, why do you kill people's deals, Troy? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm bringing it up because you're doing what's right for the customer, right? Like exactly. Yeah. That's what you're doing. It's just funny, man, because we're we're looking at it like, oh gosh, that didn't work. It's mainly because it didn't work out, you know. That's right. So, and at, at the end of the day, you know, we're all trying to do what's right, and we all want to help that person that's wanting to buy that house, but you nor me want them to move into a house that they have to, you know, have surprises and nobody wants that. So that's unfortunately the bad part about my job is sometimes we have to give the people the bad news. They don't want to hear, you know, it's yeah, part it's, of the job. I'm a firm believer in, and anyone's watching this and they know me, they, they kind of know this as well, is that um, I believe everything happens for a reason. Like, you know, you're out looking for this home and it, it doesn't appraise or, you know, you didn't win the contract or the, you know, when we get the four point came in horrible and nothing worked out. That house wasn't for you. Right. It just wasn't your house. There's another one down the road or whatever it may be, but it just wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's why I tell myself to feel better. Anyway. <laughs> I tell my clients all the time when I see them on the second round, I say the second one almost always works out better. I think you're going to be much happier. Yeah. It doesn't always work out that way, but it seems like more often than not, the second one, maybe they learn from the first one, or maybe even the realtor learns some stuff from the first one. So by the time they get to that second house, yeah. they're much happier. Well, cool, man. Good job. Got, uh, got anything else to add to the wind mitigation four point conversation? Uh, I don't think so. If anybody ever has any questions, they can, of course, call me anytime for questions on those things, especially, you know, realtors or, or even insurance agents. Okay, cool. We'll put your contact info uh, in the post. Um, hey, you know, where can they connect with you? Where, where do you want them to go? Uh, they can start with the website or call me directly. Um, you know, you can find us at healthyhomeinspectionsfl.com. Uh, all our information is there. Um, my phone number's there. You can find us on Facebook, Healthy Home Inspections. That's a great place to, to follow and see some things you can laugh at and also learn from. 
Yeah, yeah, you do a good job. You post a lot of good informational things on there. So good job to you on that, Troy. And then right. thanks for being here today. Uh, you wrote this out there. I want to kind of bring up the speed on one thing. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but when you have a buyer um, that is pre-approved to buy a home, we can pre-approve them hopefully that day. And while they're out looking for a home, we can actually have them completely underwritten and approved as well while they're out looking for homes, you know, a week or two down the road or whatever. So we get them an underwritten approval. So hopefully that helps you out. If you need that, give me a call, 239-437-4278, and let me connect with you on all the social medias as well. So Troy, man, appreciate you coming on again. Thanks, buddy. Yep, thanks for having me, Tim. You got it, man. My pleasure. Thanks, dude. See you later. Take care.